Hi everyone, today I wanted to show two types of gold centers that you can add to your flowers. I've been trying to film a lot of different gold centers that you can use, especially if you don't have a cutting machine to cut that fringe cut as I call it. So this was template 22 and um, I used this gold center here and I never made a tutorial for it because it was sort of straightforward. All I did was take a styrofoam ball and um, used gold spray paint to just spray over it. And it took all of maybe five minutes. I let it dry and um, I just glued it right onto this flower. But uh, because I'm filming and I don't like the spray painting or the spray paint fumes to kind of get in here and it's sort of ugly outside, I just I thought I would show what type of spray paint I use. So this is called uh, Design Master. It's in the premium metals uh, gold metal. And so it's a metallic sort of gold. Um, this is the one I used for this flower center. And so I got this at Michael's. I believe it's originally $7.99. If you use a coupon, it's obviously less. But this is a nice gold color that I think matches that um, gold paper that I've mentioned a couple times. That's called King Gold. Um, by Nina Paper. I use this a lot in my wedding flowers, but this gold matches really nicely. Um, it sprays really nicely, although you just have to, you know, do it outside and make sure that it doesn't get anywhere that, you know, you don't want it to be. So I usually lay a lot of newspaper. I use cardboard so that it doesn't blow anywhere that I don't want, and I always wear gloves. And so this is a really quick, easy way to get the gold center. And I just wanted to show this type. Uh, the type of spray paint I mean. But this is what I did for template 22 and this is just a spray paint. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was the the gold um, glitter flower centers that I used for um, template 10. And so what I have here is just a two inch ball and I have a piece of paper here. Um, the materials are really easy. Um, I'm gonna be the first to say that I am not an expert but this is what I did. Um, essentially I just used glitter um, this is the one that I used. I've had this probably for years, and I saw it, and I thought, hey, perfect opportunity. Um, obviously, it's inexpensive, but I used one that was quite, um, so the glitter is quite large. It's not that fine glitter. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby, again, a couple of years ago. The next thing I have is Mod Podge, and so I use this type of glue. You may be able to use um, other types of glue that works just as well. This is just um, what I did and I just have a foam brush. Okay, I'm gonna get started on this glitter ball. And um, normally I have toothpicks or something that I could poke underneath. I don't have them on hand now. So what I have is just a sewing pin that I could poke underneath and that's what I'll be using to kind of have a grip on this ball without touching it. But again, if you have toothpicks or skewers or something, that will work perfectly. But what I'll do is I'll take the Mod Podge, and just open it up. Take my foam brush and just dip it right in. And then holding it by that pin that I have, or toothpick if you have it, I'm gonna paint a nice layer of the Mod Podge on it. Again, if you've ever done any glitter projects, this is just the same concept. I just wanna put a nice layer of glue so that um, there's enough coverage over the entire ball with the glitter. Sometimes I found I found that if I go too thin with the layers, some spots don't quite get enough glitter. And it's just as simple as sprinkling it on the start. I have a shoe box that'd probably be a lot better to catch the glitter. I don't have one on hand. So this is what I'm doing. You can see at first there's a nice amount of glitter. What I like to do is just roll it in that glitter to get in that in those spots that don't have enough, or I can still see some of the white. So this really just packs it into the ball, gives it a nice sparkly look. Now I'm not sure since I haven't done it with fine glitter whether you have to do a similar step with fine glitter since it's much smaller. I 
essentially just pressing it in gets it into those spots where uh, there isn't enough. Now the glue is still wet, so try not to touch it or scrape it because then the glue will come off with the glitter. But then there are some spots where I see it, it's a little light, so I just kind of dab it with some more glue on top. And that's it's great to have a foam spongy brush to do that. It doesn't really take off much of the glitter when I dab more on. And then what's great about the Mod Podge, I'm just gonna carefully take it off. Leave it in the corner. I have one that I did earlier that I'll stick back onto this pin. So this one has dried underneath, but if you um, have Mod Podge, I'm not sure you could do it with regular glue. I'm not sure why you couldn't, but um, if someone knows why, then you could say in the comments. But what I do is I just go over it with more of the Mod Podge, just a thin layer this time, to seal the glitter. That way it doesn't flake off. Now I'm dipping it into the Mod Podge, I don't use it very often, but if you don't want glitter in your projects, if you use Mod Podge a lot, don't do that. But um, just adding a really thin layer helps set and seal the glitter so it doesn't flake off, especially if you don't want glitter all over your floors. And when, when that dries, it dries really clear. But essentially, it should look like that when it dries. It just looks as if there was never any glue in the first place. And then you have your glitter center. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or if I can answer anything. Or leave a question below if someone who has worked with glitter a lot can answer. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.